I, um, before I leave this idea uh, that you keep presenting of Darwin being a racist and therefore as a way for us to dismiss all of his ideas, um, I want to get into a little bit more detail about that because I think it's important. Um, it's actually really important. It's a fundamental difference. Um, first of all, it exposes a hypocrisy that you have. Um, a huge hypocrisy. Because when other people on the conservative side have ever been accused of being racist, you've defended them by saying, well, they said a racist thing, but they're not racist. You've said that. You've said, well, they have a racist attitude that doesn't make them a racist. In other words, a conservative can say or express any viewpoint they want, provided you agree with the rest of their body of beliefs, and you're going to therefore say that they're not really racist, right? Um, it's the same thing you said about Christians. Um, those weren't true Christians, that same fallacy. Uh, so, by making the statement that Darwin was a racist, therefore we can reject him. I want you to really, I, I, I posed at the end of the last video that you think really long and hard about um, other people that you do respect. Do you, what do you think of um, George Washington? What about Thomas Jefferson? What about Abraham Lincoln? Um, all three of them wrote extensively about how blacks were severely inferior to white people. Thomas Jefferson compared black people to orangutans. He actually made a statement stating that he noticed a natural attraction for orangutans toward black women because of you know they recognize the similarity. All right, long before Darwin, Thomas Jefferson said that. George Washington wrote extensively about how Native Americans were a scourge on the continent. All right. Um, all the way up through your 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 beloved Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan supported Bob Jones University when they were trying to deny them their tax exempt status because of the the fact that they had um, miscegenation laws on campus, meaning blacks and whites couldn't date on Bob Jones University. Ronald Reagan supported that. Okay. Now I'm not saying that that makes him a complete racist. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just trying to say that you can you seem to want to crucify Darwin for being a racist in your eyes um, and more than crucify Darwin but also enable us to safely dismiss all theories of evolution all of his ideas on natural selection because of this racism and yet you don't hold any of your own heroes or your own idols or the own people that you support to that same standard and that's a big problem okay right. too bad they didn't know about DNA back then well, wow, that's weird. I wonder if he knew about DNA if he would have drew, drew that same conclusion. Probably not. I mean, you'd think that people through evolution would be more intelligent now, but they're just more ignorant. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't believe that if he knew about DNA. Even though you guys know about DNA, but you still believe in age-old theory. So, Nick, I want you to tell me this. What exact portion of a modern understanding of genetics do you think proves evolution to be false? What specifics? What specific aspect of it do you think would have led Darwin to uh, not support his own theory, not support the theory of natural selection, not support the theory of common descent? Which, what, do you know? Come on, tell, what, what piece of it do you think um, actually has that in there? Uh, could it be maybe patterns of Mendelian gen inheritance? No, wait, that supports natural selection. Um, Let's see, what else could it be? Oh, I know. I bet it's orth orthologous gene sequences. No, don't those support common descent? Uh, what about homologous um, nucleotide sequences? What about those? No, wait, those support common descent. Uh, what about, oh, I don't know, ERVs, endogenous retrovirus insertions? Oh, wait, those show common descent. What about chromosome fusion? Oh, wait, that shows common descent. Let's see, so what exactly is it? Um, oh, I know what. I, I, I bet you it's homologies and non-coding sequences. I bet, I bet that's what... No, oh, shit. Nope. That, that proves it, too. Actually, every single thing we know about DNA supports the theory of evolution. None of it goes against the theory of evolution. And, in fact, you might... I'm surprised... Well, I'm not surprised you don't know this. Um, but after Darwin published Origin of Species, it was looked on as a brilliant idea... As, you know, as as a as as a incredibly earth shattering piece of thought, um, but it actually la it actually lacked hard evidence. 
It lacked hard evidence until the 1930s when Sir Ronald Fisher published a, a book called The Genetical Theory of Natural Selection. Um, he did At the same time it was going on, a lot of other people were, were coming to the same idea that merged genetics with natural selection and came up with a mechanism by which natural selection could operate, okay? So in, in, until, until genetics, natural, natural selection remained just kind of a, an interesting and probably true idea, but didn't have any hard support. So um, I, I, it's laughable that you would even have the, the nerve to make such a statement. Um, it just shows the fact that you know nothing about DNA, you know nothing about genetics. Actually, you know nothing about an amazingly large body of, 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 of material. It's weird. I thought you wanted to further your knowledge. It's not furthering your knowledge. It's going back in the past and believing someone that didn't have hardly any facts. You still haven't found that that half human, half ape, have you guys? Well, you keep on looking. Keep on looking. You're never going to find it. So you just keep on looking. We'll, we'll just keep on laughing at you. I mean, you guys are just a bunch of clowns. It's you know, everybody knows that. But anyway. I'll see you guys later. You guys. So you're going to end the video just like you began it, with the assertion that there are no transitional fossils, that there's no evidence for evolution, that those who believe in it are not looking at the facts, lack a thirst of knowledge like you have. That's what you're going to assert here, Nick, apparently. Um, and I want to remind you one more time that your lack of knowledge about something isn't the same thing as what other people know about something. Okay? If you take nothing home from this video, get that out of it, okay? You know absolutely nothing about practically everything, okay? Uh, we have hundreds of thousands. We've got, or we've, we've got so many fossil transitionals. In just the human lineage alone, there were three found last year, or three announced last year, human intermediate fossils, new ones, not to mention all of the ones from, be, from before. I mean, we've got... We, we know more about the steps that humanity took from ape to, to modern human, ape-like creature to modern human, than we know about many other lineages of mammals. However, we also have great lineages for everything else, from horses to whales to elephants. Uh, we've got the... Uh, I mean, uh, down across the board, we have got fantastic intermediates between every single major evolved lineages, which you would call kinds or types or whatever you want to call them. We've got them. We have the fossils. We win is, is, is a, a kind of a, a famous slogan. All right. Um, and I just I, it makes me it's frustrating beyond belief that since you've been here on YouTube, I can't count how many people have shown you to be wrong, have provided you with evidence, um, some rude like me, others very polite, very patient with you, and have provided you detailed point by point bulleted evidences against your statements that you have summarily completely ignored um, and you go on repeating the same thing over and over again are, are you that fundamentally unteachable I mean how dare you claim to have a thirst for knowledge or an interest in an in education of any kind when you you won't even acknowledge what somebody says you refuse to acknowledge it and back to this whole thing you've said before okay um, now, physical conservative Rith Randall has had an open invitation to you to debate. Um, you've completely ignored that and made up excuses why you won't do it. Any number of other people have also thrown it out there. And I will right now, I will debate you on any of these evolutionary creation issues. I will absolutely debate you on, on, a, on these creationist issues. Hell, you know what? If you want to have fun, I'll even take a creationist side and argue it against you if you want. Okay, I can do that. I can take something I absolutely don't believe in, and I will. Ab I can defend it. You want to defend young Earth creationism? I'll defend old Earth creationism if that's what you want. Um, if you want just a simple evolution of man debate, I'll do that too. Offers there. Um, I know, and I know you're going to you're going to either ignore it or mock the concept of it. And the reality is you'll make up an excuse, but the reason is is that you got your ass handed to you by Brandon. The last time you allowed yourself to get into a live debate with anybody, you got your ass handed to you, despite what you say. And you know for a fact that it will happen again. Okay?
So anyway, that's all. Uh, talk to you later. What? Genetic defects due to inbreeding. In the United States today, there exist a large number of genetic problems brought about by consanguineous relationships. Before deciding to have a child, seek genetic counseling and or know your family tree. There are a great number of resources online that can help you with this. Remember, inbreeding is all of our problems.